Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from MoboxGraphics.com and in this video tutorial, I'm just gonna be showing you how to get this really simple, flat, minimalist looking checkmark box. So I'm only gonna be showing you how to do the checkbox if you wanna know how to do this kind of um, um, depth of field type effect. You can go check out one of my other tutorials. I'll link it down in the description. But um, yeah, again, this is a really simple effect, but it does, uh, I don't know, I think it looks pretty cool. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. So here we are in After Effects. I'm just gonna create a new composition. Uh, 1920 by 1080, 60 frames a second. 10 seconds is plenty long enough. I'm just gonna hit okay and just make sure this is fit to 100%. So um, I'm just gonna create a background layer by going layer new solid and I think that's white, that looks good. So now we just have a white background layer and I'm just gonna hit this little uh, lock button so I don't accidentally grab it. So now what we're gonna need, we're gonna need a square or a rectangle. Uh, now you could use uh, the rectangle tool or the rounded rectangle tool. They both pretty much do the same thing. I'm just gonna use the rec rectangle tool um, and I'm gonna hold shift while dragging this out and that will make sure that it remains a one-to-one -one square. So it, the size really doesn't matter right now. Um, we could always change that later. I'm just gonna press Y on the keyboard and that allows me to move my anchor point to the center of the square. And then I'm just gonna use the align tool to align it in the center. If you don't have the align tool, just go to Windows, align, and you could place your align tool wherever you want. I um, mean, it's nice because it snaps right, you know, because all of the align tool basically ends there, so it'll snap to that. So that's uh, really convenient. So, okay, so we have our square. I think it's probably a little too large. I'm just gonna scale it down a little bit. And I want a stroke, so I'm just gonna add a stroke to this. And um, for the fill, let's see, I think I'm gonna make the fill actually the color that the stroke is. And I'm gonna make the stroke um, maybe a light gray. So just barely visible toward on the backdrop. So to get the rounded corners, um, you could just open up the shape layer, which I'll rename to um, box. And you go to contents, rectangle, rectangle path, and you could increase the roundness of the box. And you could make it as round as you'd like or as square as you'd like. You could even make this a circle for all I care. Um, but that's just how you kind of add some, add some radius to a square. So now again, we've talked about this in the past, but if you increase the size here, it maintains the same stroke thickness, which we want. Um, if you increase the size or the scale here, um, the, the stroke also increases. So um, I'm just gonna, while I'm in here, just open up, uh, set a few keyframes. So that way I have everything that I'm gonna need. So. I'm gonna open up stroke and I want to change the, the stroke width. So I'm gonna set a keyframe for the stroke width. Um, I'm gonna need the fill opacity and I'm gonna need the rectangle size, I believe. So if I just hit you on the keyboard now, it'll just pull up all of my, all of my uh, little keyframes that I've added. I'm just gonna drag them over to about half of a second. So that's if this is 60 frames a second, 30 frames is about is half a second. Um, and I'm then gonna move over to maybe, I don't know, a second, a little less than a second. Probably move these over, 15, so a quarter of a second. I, like, I don't like to start it directly at zero. I like to have a little bit of a buffer. So I'm just gonna go to one here and I'm gonna move my opacity over, right? Because I want this to start with a zero opacity. So I want the opacity to come in and I'm gonna want the stroke to go to zero, but then I'm gonna need this to scale up just a little bit. So just kind of make it look like the, you know, the stroke just isn't disappearing. You know, it kind of looks like the inside's also kind of popping out. So already we kind of got our little checkbox animation going and we need our check. And obviously these are gonna, these are gonna need some, some manipulating, but uh, we'll jump back to that after, uh, once you have the keyframes, it makes it way easier. So uh, now for the check mark, I'm just gonna use the pen tool and just kind of eyeball it, eyeball a check mark. That looks about right. Um, it did add a fill, so I'm just gonna make the fill none. And that check mark looks okay. Um, it's not my favorite check mark I've ever made, but uh, anyways, uh, the color doesn't matter, right? Because we're actually going to use it as a mat for the background. But what does matter is how thick it is, and it is pretty thick, so we could reduce the thickness there. So 
Now we have our check mark and we have our box. So I'm just gonna rename this layer to check mark. And I'm going to open this up and go to add trim paths. And what this will allow me to do here is when you open this up, there'll be a start and an end. And it allows you to kind of draw on the check mark. Now I'm going to need keyframes for both. So I will set keyframes for both, but uh, the first piece I'm gonna need is just kind of uh, the end. So the end goes from zero to 100. I'll be honest, this check mark for some reason, I just don't really love the way it looks. So I'm just going to kind of change it just a tad. Just like that. And then I can move it over down. So I think that might look a little bit better. A little bit of a rotation to it. So I think that looks a little bit better. Um, I'm kind of obsessing over something that doesn't matter, which is kind of, if you're a designer, you you know what that feels like. And getting this to move, okay, I'm just gonna leave it. It is what it is, it's fine, it's plenty fine. Um, so what I can do here is I could actually use the box now um, as a mat or use the check mark as a mat for the box. So I'm just gonna go through these and it's actually alpha inverted mat. So now you can see here that the check mark actually cuts out the box, so wherever I move it. And so whatever the background looks like, you'll notice if it's al alpha, um, if it's an alpha layer, it will alpha, you know, it alpha mats it. So, so we have that part, but what we're gonna need is we're gonna need to duplicate this because now we actually want the box then to mat out the check box, the check mark, just like that. And this check mark, we're gonna to want to change the stroke color to the same color as the box. So that way you kind of get this kind of negative space type check mark. Um, you know, obviously, if that's not what you're, what you're going for, then you don't have to do it like that. But that's kind of just what I did. It makes it a little bit more complicated, but uh, I don't know, I think it adds a little bit of a differentiation. So I'm just gonna select all these and hit U on the keyboard. And what I'm gonna do is I don't need these keyframes anymore. But what I do want to do is I want to hold Alt and click on each one of these stopwatches. What this allows me to do is add a pick whip and drag this pick whip from the box to the box. Um, just make sure I'm matching up stroke and opacity to stroke and opacity. And what this now does is it links these, these objects together. So these check marks are kind of linked by the keyframes only on this check mark. This box is linked to the keyframes on this box. So that way, if I want to increase the stroke width or whatever, it it works properly on, on both. So um, that's kind of what I needed. So if I didn't do that, then I want, if let's say I wanted to move this check mark, which what I first need to do is hold Alt, select that, that stopwatch, drag the pick width to the position. So now when I move this, it'll move both check marks. Um, so that's kind of important. Um, and then again, when I change the trim path, it does it for both also. So, um, so yeah, uh, now that that's done, I'm just going to lock those two layers so I don't accidentally grab them. Um, in addition, what I can do is I can click on this. This is, um, shy layers. I can shy those and hit this shy button and it will hide those layers. So they're not even visible anymore. Um, but you can do it however you'd like. You don't have to do that. Um, okay, so now we have these. Now we just need to kind of clean up these keyframes just a little bit. So what I want is I want this opacity to kind of come in really fast, but the size, maybe the size come in there. Maybe the stroke, uh, I don't know, around there. And the trim paths can probably end there. And I'm just gonna add some smoothing. So I'm gonna use my motion tool script here. You don't have to have this. This you get at mountmograph.com. It's like 30 bucks. It's really extraordinarily helpful, um, but you don't need it. Basically, I'll show you what it does. When I change the the motion script here, when I you know slide these bars, it basically just changes the the, the graphs here that I'm using. So if you want, you can go in and copy these graphs exactly the way they look. And what you would do is you would basically just select the size, highlight all these, 
and start dragging dragging these uh, these bars around. So you would basically make it look kind of something like that. That's basically what I did, but using this tool, it allows me to do that to all of these effects at the same time. Instead of now, I have to go to stroke width, um, grab these and kind of move them over. And it's, it's, it, it's not impossible, but it's not intuitive and it's not fast. So I'm just gonna use this tool, highly recommended. There's some other free ones out there, but uh, you could see that it, that it automatically smoothed this out and made it look a lot better right off the bat. So now that that animation's done, I'm just gonna come to about two seconds. And again, if I'm not gonna use the tool here, but this, this Mount MoGraph um, motion script allows you to actually select these keyframes and hit clone and it clones the keyframes. Without the tool, you can't just copy and paste because it copies and pastes the layers. So um, instead what I have to do, since I won't use the tool, Relying on the tool too much is, is not good, but it is extraordinarily helpful um, for most things. Now, basically, I'm just gonna try to copy this backwards. So um, I can copy this keyframe and paste it. I think I can copy these and paste those keyframes. Um, I guess alternatively, what I could have done was select these, copy and paste, Select these, copy and paste, select all of them, right click, keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframes, and it reverses the keyframes. But then what I would need to do is now move these around, I think. I think that will reverse it. Maybe I don't even need to do that. Maybe I'll just leave them like that. Um, but what I don't need is I don't need this trim paths here. What I need is the start trim paths. So I'm just gonna move these keyframes over and line them up. and I can make that 100. And now selecting all these layers, I'm going to turn them back into linear. So into the diamond, just by dragging this back here. Again, it's so using the tool. If you don't have the tool, you can right click keyframe assistant or keyframe interpolation and then change this to linear. And that would make it all look like that. Um, but now I'm gonna use the tool again to give them all the same motion um, as as they were here. So I'll show you what this looks like. So basically it's just an inverted motion. So you can see what this looks like. Very simple, very simple out. But anyways, guys, that's just a really simple tutorial. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please be sure to give this video a like, show me your creations um, linked on Twitter or on Instagram. Um, and as always, thanks for watching.